Hello, friends. This is Chris Prendergast back with another Google Analytics 4 tip for you. Uh, today, we're talking about content groups in GA4. Content groups are a quick and easy way to analyze the performance of your site, specifically what sections are getting traffic, uh, engagement, and really just grouping a lot of the uh, page level info that you would see by default in uh, into logical groups. And the best part about this is it is built into GA4. Well, 95% of it is built into GA4 and turned on by default. The last little 5% that you have to do is super easy. That's what we're going to look at today. Uh, and the site we're looking at is Fitstays, our example site here that talks about uh, weight loss retreats and resorts and all of those great things. Um, we'll look at this site in a little bit. First, I want to show you where you would see this in your GA4 interface. So you already have the buttons in GA4. I'm going to show you what it looks like. If you look under engagement, you might visit the pages and screens page quite often to examine the performance of your site and all the pages. Uh, this is what you would see uh, in your GA4 setup. But this drop down here, uh, I want to select content group. You already have this button. By default, your default GA4 setup, you already have this button. And by default, it's going to say not set right here. You've got no data in here that's useful. Uh, but the report is there. It's just sitting waiting for the useful data to be put in. And to get that useful data in, we turn to Google Tag Manager. There is really only one, well, two steps you have to take in Google Tag Manager. Only one of them has any level of difficulty, and uh, that is creating a variable. Before I look at our variable that we need to create, I do want to call out uh, some homework that you may have to do on your site. Essentially, you should figure out on paper or in a spreadsheet, how do you want to group your pages? Uh, I think a lot of times what makes sense is grouping the pages by maybe your main nav items. So you might have a section for listings. You might have a section for categories, section for regions, a section for blog uh, and blog posts. Um, maybe there are other page types that you want to capture that are not listed there, like careers, something like that. But figure out, hey, here are the big groups, the big chunks of content uh, that would be useful for me to see. If I could see all of the events together, if I could see all of the listings together, uh, and compare them against these other content groups. So go ahead and do that work on paper first, then go into Google Tag Manager. And we need to create a new user-defined variable, a new one. I already have it here, but you'll click new uh, and call it content group. So you create this new variable called content group, and the variable type needs to be a regex table. Uh, you can pick a lot of different types of variables, but this is the one we want, regex table. So you find that here under utilities, regex table, there it is. Um, that's your variable type. So a regex table uh, has an input and then a set of outputs. It says, hey, you give me some input and then tell me what the formula is going to be to discover the output. And so our input here is the page path variable. Uh, if you don't see page path, in your variable list, you may need to turn it on uh, in your variables section, but we're going to select page path here. That is our input, which is to say everything after the dot com. What comes after the dot com? That is our input uh, into this variable. And so hopefully your site is set up such that uh, your pages are listed into logical folders. So here is a thing that comes after the dot com. It says all listings, and then a query string. Uh, we've got a unique page here. We've got these regions that have this prefix slash listing location. Basically, you need to know what comes after your dot com or dot net or dot org or whatever. Um, uh, it, it's what's after this slash, including the slash uh, after the dot com. So these will be your guide to developing this formula, so to speak. And uh, wherever you recorded your content groups on paper in a spreadsheet, go ahead and figure out, hey, do I want to capture just this single page into a group? Or do I want to capture 
this page and all of its child pages, all of the, the sub pages within that section. So for example, I could go to this listing location page here and well, it's not anything on this site, but all of these regions live underneath that folder of listing location. So uh, there are two ways you treat this, uh, depending on whether you're capturing kind of a folder and everything within it, or if you're capturing just a single page. Our categories are set up as just single pages. You know, it doesn't have like slash category slash something. It is just this page URL. So uh, you need to decide, am I capturing a single page? And if so, it looks like this. Fitness resorts is a single page I want to capture. So here's what that website looks like. Here's what the URL looks like. Slash fitness resorts. And then it has the trailing slash here on my site. Um, if I'm capturing a single page, make sure you have the slash at the front. Do that page path. And then here is the code for capturing just this page. You do the trailing slash and then a question mark. Uh, this is uh, basically the syntax of regex or regular expressions. If you don't know a lot about it, you only need to know basically two uh, options for regex today. Uh, you can go a lot deeper than that, certainly, but we're not going to in this video. Uh, all you need to know is if you're capturing just this single page, make sure you get the slash and a question mark. And the question mark means, eh, maybe it'll have the slash, maybe it won't. But either way, our fitness resorts page will go into what output? And our output is, here are the content groups. What do we want to label our content groups? Well, that's a category page, right? All of these are category pages. So I'm going to call that category. I also have diet retreats as just a single page. Well, that's a category page. So call it category. Well, the spa resorts is a category. Yoga retreats is a category. These are all single pages. So they look like this. We also have these folders, like what we saw for listing locations. All of these regions are under slash listing location slash something, mountain, Midwest, Southeast, whatever. If I want to capture those, the whole folder of listing location, my regex code looks a little bit different. I do the page path with the slash, and then I do dot star. That is the regex code to say, hey, give me this page, well, this page, but also everything that's a child page of it. So if it's slash listing location slash uh, mountain, that would fall within here. If it's slash Southeast, uh, I think I have some states in there too. So if it's like a Colorado, that would all go into this if I do the code dot star. And then I need to figure out, well, what do I want that content group to be named? Well, anything within the listing location folder, not just that page, but the whole folder, call that a region page. I could call it a location page. Um, we call it regions in the, the site, so that works just fine. Um, and go through your whole site and do that to say, am I capturing a page or am I capturing a section of pages? Um, this website's blog is a little bit unique in that um, the blog exists at slash blog, but the pages within it are all under either sponsored or advice or news. Um, and so we have to capture blog as a single page and then capture this folder also in the blog category, this folder also in the blog category. So you can repeat these content groups if you have if you have to have multiple rows all going into the same group. So we've got blog, category, all listings is treated as kind of its own thing here. Um, it's a single page uh, and query string doesn't matter for, for this. So we're just capturing all listings here. Uh, and oh, last thing I wanna say is get the homepage. Just give yourself a slash and call that homepage. Make that its own category. I, I think almost universally, you're going to want the homepage to be its own content group. So this is the hard part, going through, doing all this. Uh, last step here before we hit save is going to be set default value. I think you probably wanna do this um, because if you don't do this, it's just gonna get counted as not set, but we want it to be set. So we wanna say, uh, let's 
call a default value and I just name mine other, um, I think that's fine. Go ahead and save this variable. Um, I don't remember what all I changed, so I'm not going to save it because mine's already set up the way I like it. But go ahead and you click save. And then, um, then you've got a nice variable here called content group that is a regex table. Now, the next step in Tag Manager is just using that variable to basically send a, uh, a, a parameter into Google Analytics 4. So to do that, go to your tags section and find your GA4 config tag. This is just the default all pages uh, tag that uh, goes on every page load. Your standard everyday, hey, here's our con config tag. Here is our measurement ID. Um, that's really the, the the meat and potatoes of your GA4 setup. We want to customize it though. We want to have a unique uh, parameter here uh, in, under fields to set. So you'll say yes, fields to set. I want a field to set named content underscore group. I'll just retype that for no reason <laughs> apparently, and then. Okay, that's the name of the field. What is the value of the field? We want to pass through the variable that we created. So go ahead and find your variable. Uh, ours is called content group. It's right here. Select that. It's going to look like this with the double squiggly brackets. And uh, you're done with Tag Manager. You just hit save. And again, um, I've already done this, so I'm going to discard my changes. But um, hit save and then submit. Submit that so it actually publishes to your site. And then your tag manager work is done. Back here in analytics, uh, most of the time when you would have set a parameter, if you want to do anything with it, you would have to create a custom dimension. However, Google Analytics 4 already gives you the custom dimension of content group. They already set that up. You don't need to do anything extra because GA4 already did that for you, creating a custom dimension called content underscore group. So all you have to do is wait for the data to come in. Uh, it, it's not retroactive, so don't look today, the day you set it up. Give it a couple days, give it a week even. Then go into your Pages and Screens page and select Content Group from this dropdown and take a look. Here are all of those categories I set up. So listing, category, region, blog, all listings. This is all the stuff that I set up uh, and uh, I think it's working. I think this makes sense. The listing pages are really popular. A lot of people are visiting those listing pages. A lot of people are visiting the category pages. Um, homepage, surprisingly, not so many people, but that's just a unique thing about this site specifically. Uh, your site will probably have a little bit more homepage action, and that is A-OK. -okay. Um, if you have, if your other number is really big, you might want to say, well, what's, what is that other number? What is actually falling in there and creating all of uh those um, basically pages that don't fall into a different logical category. So to do this, I'm going to click this button here for another uh, secondary dimension and select page path. I don't want landing page. I just want page path. And it will tell us, OK, so yes, this category content group was triggered by this page. This content group was triggered by this page. So this all makes sense. We want these pages to fall into this category. You can just kind of spot check here to say, does this make sense? Is this what I intended to have happen? So as I scroll down here, um, did I want slash listing slash premier fitness camp to go into the listing category? Yes, in fact, I did. That's successful. Did I want slash advice slash RMR versus BMR to go in the blog category? Yes, I did. Perfect. This is great. Everything is looking great here. Uh, if I get down to where other where I see other in the first column, I can say, ooh, do I want the about page to be in the other category? Uh, you know, for this site, I do. For your site, maybe you want about to be its own uh, content group, its own section. Um, you may want that. Uh, I don't for this site. I'm okay with about being in the other section. That is A-OK -okay by me. Privacy policy, sure, that's that's a great other page. Terms of use, even better. Um, so, for safety or redirect, that's not even a real page. That's fine. If uh, if for some reason you don't like what you see here, if you say, ooh, this, this slash all states, that should actually be in the region section. And maybe I do want that, actually. I could go back into Tag Manager, 
I could go ahead and update my variable. You know what? Let's just do that right now. I want the all states page to fall into the region category. So again, what's my URL? Slash all states slash. So I'm going to go ahead and add a row here. Slash all hyphen states slash. Does that look right? It sure does. And I want to put that in the region category. However, very important. This is regex, regular expression. So if I want just a single page, question mark, slash question mark will get me that. If I wanted this to be a folder, instead it would be dot star. But this is not a folder. I know that for a fact. It's just a single page. So question mark, all states. Now that page will not fall into other. That will fall into the region uh, content group. So I'm going to click Save. This is a real change that I actually do want to publish. Go ahead and submit. I'll give it a name. Um, we'll just say All States Page. And I could do a description. I'm not going to uh, because I am bad at uh, commenting my code, but we'll call that good for right now. Now, next time, uh, well, from now on moving forward, every time somebody goes to the All States page, it will not go into the uh, um, other category. It will go into the region category, which I think make, makes more sense. Um, but again, if you like some, if you see something here that you don't like, go ahead and make the change uh, in Tag Manager in your variable and go ahead and submit it. Uh, that won't change the past day. The past is gone. It's gone forever. You can't change it. But now from this moment moving forward, since I submitted that, um, it will be right and what I wanted to have happen. So uh, this was just the quick intro on the content group uh, functionality of GA4. Uh, it sounded really hard, but honestly, the hardest part was just figuring, well, how do I want to categorize the content on my site? Uh, once you've done that, the actual work in Tag Manager and GA4 is pretty straightforward. Uh, definitely leave a comment if you have any questions on this, uh, but I hope it was helpful. Uh, I hope more people will start to use this content group because I just it breaks my heart when I click on this uh, in an analytics uh, account and see all of this not set. The, the data is so close to being there. So uh, take the step, set it up, and uh, you know, learn more about your site. Get into the insights that were right there all along. I uh, hope this was helpful. Thanks so much. And I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks all. Bye-bye.